John Jones and Daniel Cormier, you know, it would be a very disappointing day if those two found a way to get it right. It really would. Like, like there's, there's some feuds you just don't ever want to die. I hate to bury a feud. Like, it, it feels good. It, it doesn't feel good to have feuds, by the way. It feels good to bury feuds, but at the same time, from the outsider looking in, you guys can't get it right. You can never get it right. It's disappointing when Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson found a way to, to work things out, right? Like, that's a letdown. Let me give you a great one. And I miss this. Joe Frazier versus Muhammad Ali. I miss the entire Muhammad Ali era. His last fight was in 1980, to put in perspective for you. I was born in 77. So I've been three years old the last time that he ever got into the ring. But I heard all about it. And Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali never got it right. And there was a year, was 1996, the Olympic Games returned to America. They were in America in, in 84, but the Russians boycotted. So it's a very questionable games. So to get the games just three times later was just a really terrific job by America. So in 1996, they come to Atlanta. And on the opening ceremonies, which is one of the most attended and watched and must-see moments in sport. It only comes along every four years, right? Like, think about the halftime show at the Super Bowl, how you must see the halftime show. It's one, it's one of the great parts. The opening ceremony for the Olympics is that but exemplified, and the ratings support what I just said. So when you get down with all... The whole thing. And they've been carrying a torch. They carried a torch all over the world. They passed a torch all over the world. My uncle won an Olympic championship. He was one of the torch carriers one day. He carried the torch and he ran it to another Olympian. And they ran all over the world. It's an awesome piece of marketing. But ultimately, you're going to run that torch. And that is going to light the flame of the Olympiad. It's the final touch. It must be done. It's like when they pick a new pope and you ring the bell and you burn, and the smoke comes up. It must be done It's part of the ceremony. It was the final touch, and Muhammad Ali did it. In front of the world, Muhammad Ali goes up there. He's got the torch. They passed it, ran it all over the world. They passed it to him. He goes, he does the final lap. He crawls the stuff. Boom. And Muhammad Ali was even passed the torch, I want to say it was by Evander Holyfield, who was an Olympic medalist from Atlanta, right, or from Georgia, rather. It's just a great moment. Joe Frazier, watch that moment, this great moment. Joe Frazier said, if I could have been up there, if I could have been up there where Muhammad Ali let, let this, I'd have pushed him in the flame and watched him burn. And there was something, now that's disgusting, right? I mean, that, that's what you're talking about, a murder. I'm not talking, what I'm talking about that is letting the grudge build, having a true grudge. I admired that from Joe Frazier. I admire that he still had it. That there, there's no bygones be bygones. There's no none of that stuff. I beat that man and he's up there. I'm sitting out here in New York with $500 in the bank. He's on NBC and the most watched program of the quadrennium. Lighting the torch and getting celebrated. I beat him. F him. I'm in. That's the way a grudge should go. And Daniel Cormier and John Jones have tried to flirt with the other. Like, they have both spread the cheeks and inserted the tongue so many times. Why? It's not real. I mean, John went first. It wasn't real. The only complaint anybody's ever had for, for, on John Jones, the only reason anybody ever badmouths John, one is jealousy to his success. That's true. He does not work very hard, and he has a tremendous amount of success. That's true. I, like, I get where that would be annoying to his own teammates. But the other side is just for being a phony. And he's done a lot of phony things. But pretending that all was good with Daniel Cormier, I mean, he kicked the guy in the head, made him separate not only from his championship, but separated him from consciousness and did it juiced up on steroids. Like, there's no room here for forgiving. And then he tried to forgive Daniel, though. He kicked Daniel in the head, took his belt, and took his consciousness away. And did it while cheating. And then issued the, I accept his apology. I am no longer mad at it, right? It was disgusting. There's no reason Daniel should ever accept that. But now you got this new, you got this real scumbaggery going on. You got scumbaggery in the form of an antitrust lawsuit. 
Now, to, to explain to you how dirty rotten this is would, would be very difficult for me to do. But it is the old-fashioned way of becoming rich. You, right, you can either inherit your money, you can win your money, or you can sue to get the money. Like, there's, there's only three ways to become rich aside from work really hard, be smarter, take risks, have it win. Surround yourself with right people. Like, like that, that's a way, but who wants to do that? That's not a very realistic way, by the way. The most realistic ways to get rich is to either inherit it, to win it, or to sue. So, find a team of lawyers, go after a big company, and sue them. And that's what's happening here. And in the process of this, they've gone out and they've asked for statements, and they have seized phone records. They've seized the phone records. I'm sorry, it's so funny. It's, I have one of these going right now. I got this guy, and he's got my phone record, and it's from Dana. It's a conversation that I have with Dana, and he's got it. He sees it. He wants to make it public. I have the foggiest idea why. And so we, I got I to stop, and he's got to go back and forth. I mean, it's, it's one of these things. I couldn't possibly care less, but I love the game because I get a charge from a judge telling this guy, you're not a very good lawyer. Like, well, right, if you try to do something legally and a judge tells you no, he just told you that you never should have tried it in the first place. You didn't have standing to do it. He just told you you're not a very good lawyer, and I get a charge out of it. But trust me, if this ever got okayed, I'm going to hold it, and I will show you the mess. I'm this close to doing it right now, to just showing you, because it's a whole bunch of nothing. But this, this idiot... <laughs> This idiot lawyer, he thinks it's something and he wants it so bad. It's like, I'm going to ruin whatever great moment he has when I show you what it was. And you're going to go, that's it? Yeah, that's it. There's nothing on it, right? So they now, through this class action lawsuit, have text message. You know how private that is. So, but, but what would you do with it? You go out and you try to cause trouble. It has nothing to do with the case. You know it has nothing to do with the case. You have to pretend it has something to do with the case. You have to pretend it does so that you can acquire it in the first place and then turn it over to the media, to the Right Through Information Act, right? The whole thing is a scam. So text messages came up that had referred to John Jones as, I believe it was a scumbag, might have been a dirtbag. It was a nothing, right? I mean, bad language comes in four letters. We all know that. And I, I always go back to school. When my kids will ask me, hey, Dad, is this a bad word? And then I'll, I'll let them know. Because there is, like, there is low fodder. And then there is high cannon fodder, right? I mean, there are words. Yeah, that's a bad word. That's a really bad word. There's two words. Don't ever use them, right? One starts with F. One starts with N. But you have to have these conversations. Kids don't know unless you tell them. But then you have lighter words, and dirtbag or scumbag, whichever one was being used here, would not get you kicked out of class. Not through any of the Westland School District, the high school, the middle school, or the elementary school, where I went. I will even think about my teachers. If I said scumbag in class, I was mad at it, and I said, you scumbag to a fellow, so would they kick me out of class? No. Would they kick me out of class if I call them a dirtbag? No. Now, it's not nice. Those aren't good words. Those aren't nice words. But they would be so low on the tree that they would not even get you a reprimand in the public school system here in Westland. And that's the word that Dana used. And John Jones had committed crimes. and He committed felonies. And he had one group of people that backed him up. His own gym did not back him up. His own coaches who he pays told him, you can't come to this facility anymore. You have to go to a different facility, which is going to cost them money. It should have cost them hundreds of thousands, but I can't imagine that John Jones paid what he was supposed to pay. So I have a feeling it didn't cost them hundreds of thousands. It probably cost about 20000 to fight. Now, I don't know that, but I don't believe that John Jones ever paid anybody the 10% that he owed for our industry standard on his $2 million. I, I don't believe that. So. Of all of these terrible things, he had one group that stood by him. That was the UFC. John Jones was facing prison time. 
and he very likely would have gone to prison. Judges and DAs love to stick somebody famous and stick them right in the ass with that. But the day of the sentencing, Lorenzo Fertitta and Dana White boarded two separate aircraft, landed in Albuquerque, which is a disgusting area, and went and sat in that courtroom. They didn't say a word, but they sat there and the judge saw them and the judge respected them and the judge let their guy go home. And that very guy then tried to turn the gun on the organization. And the worst that the organization did was to call him a scumbag. And if I have it wrong, a dirtbag. And you would have to be a special kind, a real special kind of crybaby, to print that and feel that you have something, to feel that you've stirred the pot. And the same thing would go for John Jones. For John Jones to read that and know that he did what he did and all the things that you did for him. That Bentley that you wrecked that all, almost killed people was a gift by them. They gave it to you. That's the irony of the whole thing. And if the worst thing that came from that, if the worst and the most that they wanted back, the pound of flesh that they were owed, they called you a scumbag. I would think you got off pretty light. 